This video will contain spoilers for the entirety of Devilman Crybaby. Devilman Crybaby is all about love. I know that sounds crazy. How the hell could a show that ends so horribly and displays so many of the most terrible aspects of humanity be about love? But hey, if you don't believe me, then you can probably trust the show's director, Masaki Yusa, who in an interview with BuzzFeed Japan was asked, What Ryo takes away from it? You've said before, in the end, it's about love. Is that what you meant? To which Yusa replied, that's right, it's about what Ryo learns in the end. Now, this is a bit strange, because for the most part, we've been conditioned to find meaning in stories by considering what the protagonist learns, not the antagonist. So once I started viewing the anime as being Ryo's story, and as being about what he learns, the show really opened up and I was able to see beyond its surface. Because Devilman Crybaby is not just a thriller without a meaning, it's a cautionary tale about the dangers of rejecting love. First, it's important to discuss Akira and Ryo's relationship. Many sections have been added into the anime that show the way Akira's relationship with others breaks down because of his relationship with Ryo, and those relationships that do not break down quickly are threatened by Ryo all the same. After all, because of Ryo, Akira loses his biological family, Miki's parents, who he was extremely close to, and eventually Miki herself. In fact, long before Miki's death, Ryo threatens to kill her, but ultimately lets her live because of how close Akira is to her. In this manner, Ryo's hold over Akira is similar to the hold an abuser may have over the individual they are abusing. Thus, he tries to separate the other people Akira cares about from him, sometimes through situations that he manufactures and sometimes through direct confrontations. It is also important to consider the fact that Ryo is much more involved here in the apocalypse than he ever was in the manga, which makes Devilman Crybaby far more about Ryo specifically than the manga ever was, and about how Ryo actively destroys Akira's life. However, even more important than Ryo's representation in the anime is how Miki is handled. In the manga, Miki encourages Akira to be confrontational and when he does become violent, she gets excited and even turns her on. However, in the anime, she symbolizes love, acceptance, and by extension, peace. After all, instead of delighting in violence, she seems concerned by Akira beating up the rappers. Similarly, she is the one to stand up for the Devilmen, to encourage them to join together and unify even after demons have killed her brother and her parents. She also accepts Akira, despite the fact that the rappers are ready to shoot him when Ryo reveals that Akira is a Devilman through a television broadcast. So when she dies, the story takes a very surprising turn. And this is where many have come to the conclusion that the story ultimately shows how broken humanity is or can be, which I'm not going to deny here. I mean, the Devilmen that band together aren't even able to stop Ryo after her sacrifice, so why? If this is a story about love, then is it about how love fails or about how love is unable to cause any genuine change? But the show also seems to be about how violence is bad and will only lead to destruction, so how can that be the case? Well, this is where it becomes very important to consider things from Ryo's point of view, especially at the end of the show. After all, in the anime's final moments, Ryo recalls his time with Akira and finally breaks down, revealing the tears that Akira has claimed he's cried for so long. And right before this moment, we see the baton being passed from one child to another, making a line of four just like the 4x4 relay that Miki so badly wanted to run but was never able to complete. The baton goes from one child who may be Miko to Miki, then to Akira, and then Akira tries to give it to Ryo, but Ryo does not take it. This happens over and over, making its importance clear through sheer repetition. And let's consider when Ryo truly betrayed Akira and humanity. During the 4x4 relay, during that event that Miki was excited for when he decided to reveal the demons to the world. In this way, the 4x4 relay is also symbolic of love and the acceptance that is advocated for by Miki and is corrupted by Ryo. Here, Ryo rejects this event by using it to his horrible ends, twisting an act of love into an act of hate. And even in these moments, even when he could take that baton from Akira's hand and accept the love it symbolizes, he does not. And this isn't something that just started now as he lies on his back and stares up at the empty sky in a desolate world of his own design. This was something that he's done since he was a child, as he grew up and as he betrayed all those around him, as he inspired their hatred and their disdain. If Ryo had only accepted love, if he had only understood that this weak individual named Akira was enough for him, then it wouldn't have come to this, and he would not have lost the one individual in the world who seemed to genuinely care for him. So through Ryo's consistent mistake of not accepting love, he loses it all. In this way, Devilman Crybaby is a cautionary tale not about the dangers of war like its source material, but about the dangers of not accepting love, 
of not taking that baton and holding it in your hand. Because the repercussions of such a thing can be horrifying. Because if you don't accept it soon enough, it will sometimes be too late to accept it at all.